Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this update. They've got everything you need to stay smooth, clean, and nice smelling for the summer. Get their starter set for just $5 at dollarshaveclub.com slash the no. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. There have been all kinds of fake leaks and reports and all sorts of crazy rumors about the PlayStation 5 over the past few weeks. Even Eurogamer is getting in on the action. Digital Foundry's Richard Ledbetter reports that based on their sources and the conversations happening right now between PlayStation 4 lead architect Mark Cerny and various developers around the world, the earliest possible date for a PlayStation 5 would be late 2019. According to Ledbetter, a lot of this is due to two technological hurdles, a better way to produce the system's processor and newer, faster memory. He adds that based on those challenges, that date could easily fall back to sometime in 2020. Ledbetter goes on to speculate about the potential specs of PlayStation 5 based on the current CPU and GPU roadmap, estimating it will land somewhere in the region of 11 to 15 teraflops, but of course there are a lot of factors that will ultimately settle that out. But hey, here's another another way in saying 2019 maybe, 2020 more likely, which is kind of where we fell in the whole speculation uh, timeline too. Remember those new Xbox Live avatars Microsoft has been working on? We saw them and then we sort of stopped hearing anything about them? Well, now we got a bunch of new details about them courtesy of a leaked video. The video was discovered by users on Reset Era who found it via a former Microsoft designer who'd uploaded it to YouTube. The video shows the new Xbox avatar editor in action, revealing a whole range of customizable options like body, face, hair, makeup, limbs, and also fingernails with color selectors for each one. You can also buy new stuff from the Xbox store because of course you can. The new avatar editor will supposedly roll out to the Xbox preview program later this month and then we'll see what we're working with. If you thought the upcoming God of War's Metacritic score was already just too damn high, well, it's gone up now that even more reviews have come in. The new PS4 exclusive is now sitting pretty at a 95 on the review aggregator, which officially makes it the highest rated PS4 exclusive of this generation, which is kind of crazy. It's, that's very good company. I mean, 95 ties it with The Last of Us Remastered, also puts it ahead of Uncharted 4, which was at 93, but it doesn't make God of War the best reviewed PS4 game ever. I'm afraid those honors belong to Grand Theft Auto 5. So, looks like we got this year's Breath of the Wild on our hands already, folks! Now it's time to wait for all those angry petitions for people being like, no, I'm gonna rate it a zero just because I think the, the average score is too high. It's definitely a zero. <laughs> anyway, God of War releases Friday, April 20th, and then you can decide whether it's worth a zero or a ten. Because I guess those are the only two things we've rated now. Nintendo's gearing up to support the Switch with all of its top rated franchises and judging by some new comments, they might be looking to revive some old ones as well. Next potential refresh on the list, Wave Race. Those teases come from Wave Race producer Shinya Takahashi who said in an interview with Fandom at the BAFTA Awards, you may see that game again. We've been trying to make many games and that may be one of them. I personally love Wave Race. Now, if you're wondering, the last Wave Race was Blue Storm for the GameCube back in 2001. The game averaged an 80 on Metacritic, so I mean, I would say 17 years sure we're due for something new from the series, right? Life is Strange developer Don't Not is riding high on the success of Life is Strange and the hype for its upcoming release, Vampire, to the point that the French company is now considering going public. This studio presented its legal documents to the French Authority of Financial Markets in preparation to jump into that stock market. As part of its announcement, Don't Not also revealed it currently is in talks with major publishers over two brand new IPs they're developing. That's in addition to one they're creating with Bandai Namco that's going to be revealed later this year and a secret game with an unannounced publisher, so man, they're looking very busy as of late, and apparently feeling very, very good about their future successes as well. So we'll see if we hear announcements about these new IPs and their publishers soon. I can think of an event in maybe two months where that kind of thing is likely to happen. Yoko Taro is certainly one of the most uh, unique voices in video games. Now the director of Nier Automata is talking a little bit more about whether or not he'd like to make a sequel. In a recent interview with Game Reactor, Taro was asked about his future plans for the series, and apparently it all hinges on whether or not Square Enix wants to fund it. Taro said, if Square Enix gives me money, I will create anything. So I think let Square Enix know, and I think if Square Enix wants it, I'll do it. Taro also went on to talk about why they designed the title to take advantage of multiple playthroughs, citing it as actually a budget issue. 
About the game's structure, he said, it would have probably been completely different with a bigger budget. When we first talked about constructing the game, I think it would have been something that's really different than what Nier Automata ended up being. So, here's what we do. Everyone go tell Square Enix to give Taro enough money to just make the game he wants. Gary Gygax, the creator of D&D, is about to have some of his unpublished work resurrected in the form of video games. Fig and the Gygax Trust have just announced that they're partnering to bring some of Gygax's work to Fig's crowdfunding platform. The goal is to team up with the right developers for each project and launch a crowdfunding initiative around each one. Alex Gygax, CEO of the Trust and Gary's youngest son, said, I've always wanted to see them put out in the next level. Pen and paper is a dying art. Computer games, video games, they're the next generation, the next wave of games, and I've always wanted to see them on that new medium, and I've always wanted to be working with someone who is excited as I am about it. One of the projects they're most excited about, Gygax's personal campaign he ran for his friends. Steven Spielberg is making a superhero movie for DC. <sighs> He's gonna drive that, that money making he does up even higher. And so that's the big news of the week. So far, Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment is developing a movie around the character of Black Hawk, a World War II era Nazi hunter who leads an international squadron with an aim to take down the Axis powers. Yeah, good fit, right? The popular 1940s comic character was certainly an inspiration for Indiana Jones. Spielberg is working closely with screenwriter David Cope, who wrote Jurassic Park, War of the Worlds, and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull for Spielberg, and is considering directing. Now, if that happens, it'd be after Indiana Jones 5 and a remake of the classic musical West Side Story. Landing a Spielberg-directed comic book movie would be a huge get for the DCEU, so fingers crossed that actually happens. Stranger Things Season 3 is casting up and they have just announced two new phases. The Princess Bride's Carrie Elwes will be playing Hawkins politician Mayor Klein, and the Frighteners Jake Fusey will play a character known only as Bruce. As usual, the Duffer Brothers are keeping the plot super secret, but it's no surprise they continue the trend of casting an 80s star in the new season. Elwes can play both charming and sleazy, which is a great combo for a politician. I wouldn't expect him to be up to any good in this season, cause where's the fun in that? So far, the only thing we know about the news story is that Will won't be the primary target of the evil this time around, and the threat is going to be something we haven't seen before. Filming on the next season is right around the corner, so expect some more casting announcements and plot hints in the coming months. YouTube's been taking a lot of heat in the last year or so over demonetization. Now, CEO Susan Wojcicki is speaking out about it. In a new post on the YouTube blog about the company's 2018 priorities, Wojcicki addressed the February change to make the barrier for monetization a little bit more difficult to cross. She wrote, while we know some creators found this change frustrating, it strengthened advertiser confidence, making monetization and the broader community on YouTube stronger for creators building their business on the platform. She also added that creators with larger audiences grew those audiences even bigger, with five-figure channels earning 35% more and six-figure channels earning 40% more. Those are great stats for the little guys, but I guess for those who are trying to make it full-time and are at that level already, that's good news. Wojcicki went on to outline a pilot program that's meant to curtail the false demonetization flags that many creators have been complaining about in the recent months, and those changes are supposedly launching very soon. All right, that's all the news for this roundup. Let us know what you think of these updates in the comments down below. To make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every weekday, like this video, and if you're new to this channel, subscribe to The Know. Shout out to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this update. Dollar Shave Club has gone beyond razors. Now they've got everything from hair products to body cleanser to skincare to so keep your skin smooth and you're gonna be clean head to toe and you're gonna smell great in the process. Personal recommendation would be the Amber Lavender Soap, but also I'm a sucker for lavender, so your mileage may vary. Like everything from Dollar Shave Club, they deliver right to you so you don't need to wander around the store looking for an employee to unlock a razor case because that's annoying and always just ended up leading to me not bothering to go to the store because I couldn't deal with it and then I would be using the same razor for months and months and months and that was not great for my legs. Uh, and every product is their own original stuff made with premium ingredients. It's nice. You can get your first month of their best razor, that's the executive razor, along with travel size versions of shave butter, body cleanser, you can even try the butt wipes for $5. After that, replacement razor cartridges ship for just a few bucks a month. So get your starter set for $5 when you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash the know.